This year, Halloween fell on a weekend. Me and Ghetto Boys are trick or treating. What's good, people? Welcome to the Uptown Harbor Review Show. Uh, before I get into the review, I just wanted to uh, to give a, a quick thanks to my man uh, Spooky Noodles and my boy Working Man Reads. You know, when I first started the channel, each of you gave me a shout out and I forgot to thank you in the last video. You know, so I just wanted to take the time now to say thank you, you know, to the both of you. So, yeah, uh, highly appreciate it, man. Now on to the review. Today we are reviewing Muerte con Carne by Shane McKenzie. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, so this book centers around this young Mexican girl by the name of Marta, right? When Marta was a, a young kid, her and her family were living in Mexico and they wanted, you know, they wanted to cross the border illegally to get into the United States. So, you know, they make that journey and right as they are about to cross the border, a fucking truck comes and it is immigration, right? They fucking... They seize the family, they send the parents back to Mexico, but they keep Marta, right? And they put her in foster care. She's in, like, she spends her childhood in all different types of orphanages and all that. So this event pretty much, like, sent her life upside down, right? She never got to see her parents again. But now that she's grown, she's like, yo, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go right back to the border. I'm gonna pose like I'm an illegal and I'm going to allow, uh, I'm going to allow ICE to, to take me and to put me into their custody. But what they don't know is that I'm going to have a hidden camera on me the whole time. And I'm going to expose everything. I'm going to expose the way they fucking mistreat people, the way they put people in cages, children in cages, how they fucking, you know, how, how all the injustices, you know what I'm saying? So she has this plan and she convinces her boyfriend to come along. So, you know, they, they, the boyfriend agrees and now they're on the road, you know, they drive into the border. But the problem is along the way, they get into this huge argument and the boyfriend is like, yo, yo, you know what? You, you going by your damn self, man. I'm going to drop you off here. I'm going back home. Have, have fun with your little, with your little mission, you know? So Marta's like, all right, I, I, I ain't need you anyway. Anyway, I just wanted you here for moral support. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, she goes, she walks to that border, like probably 20, 30 miles or whatever. Yo, she gets there at nighttime. And right when she gets up to the border, uh, she sees like these bright lights flash, flash at her, right? And in her mind, she's like, yo, this is go time, man. This is the moment of fucking truth. But the people who come, it's like this truck. The people who come out the truck, they don't, they don't try to arrest her. They fucking knock her out and put her in the back of a van, right? So she wakes up a little while afterward and she is, she finds out she is in a normal ass house. She is not in a containment camp. She is not in a government facility. She's just in this normal house with this normal family. And what she finds out is that these people are a family who live, you know, right by the border. And what they do is they, they, they find all the people who are trying to gain access to the United States. They take these people and they fucking kill them pretty much because they have found out that if you if you prepare human meat a certain way, it is the most tasty, delicious thing that you will ever have in your life, you know? So these people, they have a food truck that they have on the side of the road and they selling like tamales and all types of Mexican dishes or whatever. But the patrons don't know that they're eating fucking human flesh. And all, all of their patrons are like, yo, this is the best food I ever had in my life. You know, it's like the most amazing food you can ever eat. But it is human meat. You feel me? So that that's this family's business. They just, you know, kidnap you know, all types of people, they kill them, and then they, they use their meat for their business, right? But it, it does not stop there. These people, since they're living in the middle of nowhere, they don't really have much in the way of entertainment, right? So what they do is, whenever they, they capture, they, they pretty much only do it to men, but when they capture someone, they have this cousin, right? This big six foot five, huge motherfucker, right? He is obsessed with wrestling and he has a couple screws loose. 
So you know what they do? They say, yo, they call him El Gigante. They go, yo, El Gigante, uh, we're going to give you this person and we're we, we going to put them in, the, in, a, in a wrestling ring with you. And you are just going to put on your, your, your luchador mask and you are just going to pummel this person for hours on end. It's going to be fucking WWE right in our living room. You get what I'm saying? So, yo, whenever they, they get a new uh, a new victim, they all huddle up in the living room. They set up this, this wrestling ring in the middle of the living room. And they just watch as this guy just beats the hell out of these people, man. They, they have kids watching. They These people are just fucked up in the head, right? So, Marta's there and she's like, yo, I am pretty much fucked, man. I have no idea how I'm going to get out of this. But what she doesn't know is that... uh. You know, she 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 had the whole hidden camera on her. So after a while, her boyfriend is watching live. He is watching a fucking live feed of what's going on, you know? So now it is up to him to save her. Yeah, that's pretty much the book, man. I don't want to spoil it further than that. But, uh... Yeah, this book, you know, it was good for the most part. But, um... Aside from the whole Latin, the whole Latin flavor that the book has, you know, it, it, it doesn't really do anything new with the whole cannibal family genre, you know? It's like if you read one, like, like if, if you were like me and you read a lot of these types of books with like, you know, cannibal hillbillies living in the middle of nowhere, if you read a lot of those books, you're going to read this and you aren't really going to see anything that you haven't seen before, you know? Like I said, aside from the whole Latin theme and instead of them being hillbillies, they Mexican or whatever. Aside from that, the book doesn't really have anything new or interesting to offer. You know what I'm saying? So for that, I wasn't really too crazy about the book. You know, it was entertaining, but, you know, like I said, it was it was nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, as far as the score, though. Despite my criticism of it not being that original, I would still have to give it a 7 out of 10, man. So yeah, there's my review. Uh, uh, Muerte con carne by Shane McKenzie. 7 out of 10. And with that, I'm out. I hope you liked this video. I hope you leave a comment. And I hope you subscribe to my channel. I'm out.